So today I'll be talking on the virus host interaction. So as we all know from the previous classes that virus contain either DNA or RNA as the genetic material which is surrounded by a protein called, called as capsid. So these viruses are the obligatory intracellular parasites that can replicate only within the living host cells. And they display remarkable specificity in both the host species and the cell types that they infect. Generally, all viruses, they enter the body through the epithelial surface of the respiratory tract, elementary tract, and the reproductive tract. Sometimes, these viruses can also enter through wounds in the skin. So, the different steps that are involved in the virus replication includes attachment, penetration, uncoating, replication, assembly, and finally, released. So, first we'll come to attachment. So, the virus attaches to a specific receptor site on the host cell membrane through the cell surface molecule, that is the glycoprotein and the glycolipids which are embedded in the viral envelope. So, this glycoprotein, they have a sugar group that is attached to the protein and the glycolipids have fat or the lipid group that is attached. This receptor on the host cell enables the virus to gain entry into the host cell. So, some of the viruses, they have a very narrow host range. That is, they can only infect one or a small number of cell types, while others, they have a broad host range, which means that they can infect a large number of different cell types. This is partially determined by whether the receptor of the virus is expressed on many or a limited number of cell types. Next, we'll come to penetration. Virus, they enter the host cell through three different routes. The first one is direct penetration. In this, the virus capsid or the genome is injected into the host cell cytoplasm. The second one is fusion. In this, the cell membrane is punctured and met to further connect with the unfolding viral envelope. In viruses with viral envelope, viral receptors are attached to the receptors on the surface of the cell and secondary receptors may be present to puncture the membrane fusion with the host cell. After the attachment is achieved, the viral envelope, it fuses with the host cell membrane, emptying the content into the cell. So, this route of entry can be carried out by the viruses that have an envelope. The next we'll see endocytosis. So, this endocytosis is a process by which materials from the outside the cell such as proteins are absorbed by the cell. All the cells of the body use endocytosis as the substances are large polar molecules which cannot pass through the plasma membrane. There are three types of endocytosis that includes phagocytosis, receptor mediated endocytosis and the pinocytosis. So, a process by which cells ingest a large object such as cells which have undergone apoptosis, bacteria or viruses is known as phagocytosis. Here, the object is surrounded by a membrane and a large vacuole which is known as phagosome, it seals the object. In receptor mediated endocytosis, the coated pit are formed when the cytoplasmic membrane folds inward. Further, these inward budding vesicles bud to form the cytoplasmic vesicle. While in case of pinocytosis, it involves the uptake of solute and a single molecule such as protein. So, now we'll come to uncoating. This process that is uncoating, it makes the nucleic acid available for the transcription to permit multiplication of the virus. During 
or after penetration, the genome is completely released from the capsid in some of the viruses known as the uncoating. In other viruses such as retroviruses and the reuviruses, the first stage of the viral replication cycle that is transcription and replication, it occurs inside the capsid. So these capsid undergo some conformational changes during infection that allows the viral gene expression and or replication to begin and the resulting structure are termed as partially uncoated particles. Since Almost all DNA viruses, it replicate in the nucleus of the infected cells, they must be targeted there. In many cases, the entire nucleocapsid enters the nucleus where uncoating then take place. Now is replication. So the next step is the replication and it depends on the viral genome. So virulent viruses, either DNA or RNA virus, stop all the cellular protein synthesis and disaggregate cellular polyribosome which leads to a shift in the viral synthesis. Whereas in case of moderate viruses, that is the polyoma viruses, it may stimulate the synthesis of host DNA, messenger RNA, that is the mRNA and the protein. In animal DNA viruses, Transcription and translation are not coupled. Except in pox viruses, transcription occurs in the nucleus and translation in the cytoplasm. So the primary transcript that is generated by the RNA polymerase too are larger than the mRNAs that is found on the ribosome. And in some cases, as much as 30% of the transcribed RNA it remains untranslated in the nucleus. The viral messengers, however, like those of animal cells, are monocystronic. So the synthesis of the early protein is the key initial step in the viral DNA replication. So after DNA synthesis, the remainder of the genome, it is further transcribed into the lead messenger. And the complex viruses, they have an immediate early genes which are expressed in the presence of inhibitors of protein synthesis and delayed early genes which require the protein synthesis for expression. So this regulation is carried out by the proteins that are present in the variants or specified by the viral or cellular genes interacting with the regulatory sequences which is at the 5 prime end of the genes. These sequences may respond in trance to product produced by the other genes and act in cis on the associated genes. Different classes of genes may be transcribed from different DNA strand and therefore in opposite direction. For example, the polyoma viruses. The transcript may also undergo post transcriptional processing so that non-essential intervening sequences are removed. So now coming to RNA virus replication, the viral genome is dictated by the absence of multiple translational unit within the same messenger and to overcome this difficulty, three main strategies have been developed. So the first strategy is the viral messenger RNA, it acts directly as the messenger and is translated monocystronically which is followed by a cleavage to form different proteins. The next strategy is the variant RNA, it is transcribed to yield a various monocystronic mRNAs by initiating transcription at various places. The third one is the genome itself is a collection of separate RNA fragments that are transcribed into the monocystronic mRNAs. So in all the cases, replication consists of a building a template strain complementary to the viral strain of the same length, which is then served as the template for the progeny viral strain. 
So these steps are carried out by a collection of enzymes of body, viral and the cellular origin in association with the nucleocapsid of the infecting variants. In RNA replication, the newly made template strain, it remains associated with the viral strain on which it is made, forming a double-stranded structure which is known as the replicative form. So the synthesis of the new strand, it occurs by the conservative asymmetric synthesis. So this replicative form with a nascent viral strain is known as the RI, which is termed as replicative intermediate. So replicative form molecules are abundant during replication because after the completion of a new strand, the enzyme replicates, it appears to remain associated with some time with the template before reinitiating the synthesis. The replicating form, it then accumulates at the end of the replication when no more replicating intermediates are formed. So now we'll come to assembly. The process of variance assembly involves bringing together of the newly formed viral nucleic acid and the structural proteins to form the nucleocapsid of the virus. Basically, three strategies are employed by the viruses. The first one is naked icosacadral viruses. In these viruses, pre-assembled capsomere, they are joined to form empty capsid, which is also known as procapsid. So these procapsid are the precursors of the variants. The assembly of capsomers to form the procapsid is often accompanied by extensive reorganization which is revealed by the changes in serological specificity and the isoelectric point. Example, Picona viruses and the adenoviruses. Now we'll come to the enveloped viruses. In this group of viruses, the viral proteins are first associated with the nucleic acid to form the nucleocapsid, which is then surrounded by an envelope. In nucleocapsid formation, the proteins are all synthesized on the cytoplasmic polysomes and are rapidly assembled into capsid components. In envelope assembly, virus specified envelope proteins go directly to the appropriate cell membrane, that is, the plasma membrane, the endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi apparatus, displacing the host proteins. In contrast, the carbohydrate and the lipids are produced by the host cell. The viral envelope, it has a lipid constitution of the membrane where its assembly takes place. For example, the plasma membrane for otomyxoviruses and paramyxoviruses, the nuclear membrane for herpes viruses. In the synthesis of envelope glycoproteins, the polypeptide backbone is first formed on the polysome which is bound to the endoplasmic reticulum, which is then moved via transport vesicle to the Golgi apparatus where it attains its full glycosylation and the fatty acid acylation. Then the matrix proteins that are present in the viral envelope are usually not glycosylated and it stick to the cytoplasmic site of the plasma membrane through the hydrophobic domains. These metric proteins, it connects the cytoplasmic domain of the envelope glycoproteins with the cell's cytoskeleton and they collect the viral glycoprotein to form the variants. So now we'll come to the complex viruses. Maturation of the highly organized Pox viruses takes place in the cytoplasmic foci. In contrast to simpler viruses, the Pox virus membrane, it contains newly synthesized lipids that differ in its composition to the cellular lipids. So the maturation of the Pox viruses, it takes place after the precautions have been enclosed within the primitive membranes. So now we'll come to release. The last stage of 
viral replication is the release of the new variants which are produced in the host organism. They are then able to infect the adjacent cell and repeat the replication cycle. So viruses, they can be released from the host cell by the lysis. So lysis is a process that kills the cell by bursting its membrane and cell wall if present. So this is a feature of many bacterial and some animal viruses. So some viruses undergo a lysogenic cycle where the viral genome is incorporated by a genetic recombination into a specific place in the host chromosome. The viral genome is then known as the provirus or in the case of bacteriophages, it is termed as the prophage. So whenever this host divides, the viral genome is also replicated. Then the viral genome is mostly silent within the host. However, at some point, the provirus or the prophage, it may give rise to active virus which may lyse the host cell. Enveloped virus, for example, the HIV, typically they are released from the host cell by budding. So during this process, the virus acquires its envelope, which is a modified piece of the host plasma or other internal membrane. So that was about the virus-host interaction. And at the end, I would like to add that the interaction of the virus with the host cell, it plays an important role in viral infection and the consequential pathogenesis. So this viral replication cycle can produce a dramatic biochemical and structural changes in the host cell which may lead to severe cell damage. And this damage can change the cell function or even destroy the cell.